Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about rifle sight in with iron sights. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is start by doing a little prep work before we leave to go to the range. And really what I'm talking about is making sure that the sights are installed correctly. Refer to the owner's manuals to make sure that you have done that. If the rifle already came equipped with iron sights, you can go online and try to figure out what the proper procedures are for zeroing them or the corrective value. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. One of the things that I recommend is that if you are going to install your own iron sights on your rifle, that you try to, number one, keep within the same manufacturer. So try not to mix and match. Then number two, try to get as much distance as you can between the front and the rear sight. The greater the distance, the better you will be as far as being able to hold with minimal movement. After that, we need to talk about what range would I want to zero my iron sights. And there's a lot of debate about this, but what I will tell you is that these backup sights are designed to be just that, used in, in extremist circumstances. So more than likely, you're not going to have to zero them at your preferred zero that you would use for a red dot sight or even an optic like a scope. Instead, what I recommend is that you zero them at the 25 yard line, get them nice and dialed in, and then figure out what your hold is at the rest of the distances. So at 50, at 75, and at 100. That's probably a little bit better because you'll find that you'll be able to get a nice tight zero at 25 and then just figure out where you need to hold at all those other ranges. Now, when it comes to the procedure for iron sights, it's not much different from the red dot sight. What I recommend though, is that you first start at about the 10 yard line. Bring the target in nice and close. Then what will happen is we're only going to be looking at our windage. I want to make sure that my windage is as precise as I can possibly get it at that distance. I know that if I'm aiming at the X ring that I'm probably going to see my shots hit low at 10 and that's okay. I'm not really worried about elevation. I just want to make sure that my windage is as precise as I can get it. Now, once I have zeroed at the 10 yard line, now I want to take it out to the 25. When I get to the actual shooting components, my best piece of advice is to try to be as stable as you can possibly be. That means if you can use a bipod, you might want to do that, sandbags, a gear bag, either something that will allow you to eliminate as much of the human error in the zeroing process as possible. That'll give you a nice, precise, and genuine zero. Once your iron sights are zeroed, you're probably not going to need to do a lot of adjustments, but it is still good to reconfirm every now and then, especially if you change out your ammunition. If you go from shooting one weighted bullet to another weighted bullet, definitely a good idea. Now, one of the other nice things about the iron sights is once you install a red dot sight, you can co-witness with that red dot to make sure that everything is still in sync. Meaning once your red dot is zeroed, you can flip up your iron sights and match them up with your red dot sight. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.